In this video, I'm going to be installing the IRVWPC Intelligent RV Water Pump Controller in my Outdoors RV 280 KVS. Um, I'll put some bullet points in the description that talk a little bit about the supposed benefits of this, along with uh, another video um, that kind of gave me the idea to do this. So, in my 280 KV 280 KVS, the water pump is located in the kitchen underneath the cabinet door there. So let's open it up and get started. This is what it looks like underneath the cabinet and you can see the water pump there. Um, this is the outlet on this side so that's where we'll be installing the pressure sensor. Um, they provide several fittings as you saw before. Um, the positive power connector is on the front side of the pump over there. The negative connector is here. Um, getting at the front there is a little bit tricky. Um, I can do it from the panel that accesses the furnace. I put a light over there for now. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Here you can see the front of the water pump. That front red connector is the one we're gonna want to unplug and we'll be connecting that up to the, uh, the controller. I pulled the red wire from the front of the pump. I've got it here. Um, and I got the black wire I cut. It's on the back of the pump. I've got it connected uh, temporarily here to a voltmeter. One of the videos I watched suggested verifying that the polarity of the trailer wiring is correct because the pump apparently can work either way. Um, so let's just verify that positive here is positive and negative is negative. And indeed it is. So we've got positive 13.3 volts and so we can proceed. The next step is to attach the plumbing. Um, so again, this is the outlet uh, side of the pump. They give you some different types of fittings. So let me fiddle with that a bit and I'll come back and show you how I've got it hooked up. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Coming off the pump, I have their 90 degree adapter. It's uh, kind of adjustable because of the way they made it. And then up at the top is where the pressure sensor will go. Um, and then the outlet pipe is uh, this one here. And so hopefully that'll work. Hopefully it's not going to leak. Um, it all seems to fit in there. This, by the way, is the winterization pipe uh, to be able to suck in antifreeze. Okay, let's see if we can get the electronics hooked up now. All right, I have the wires connected. It's a little bit tricky because of that one wire that's at the front of the pump. Um, but basically, the connections are, and it's pretty well outlined in the manual, the connections are that the uh, positive 12 volts coming in from the trailer, which was connected to the front connector on the pump, now goes to the red connector on the control unit. Um, and uh, that's also, uh, so yeah, this is the incoming power, and then it goes to the front of the pump and it goes to power the controller. The uh, black wire that was on the back of the pump gets cut and it goes to the purple wire down here. Um, that becomes part of the control uh, electronics. And then the negative uh, 12 volt ground coming from the trailer connects to the negative black uh, lead on the controller. So it's pretty straightforward. They give you these nice uh, Wago connectors. I really like those. I'll clean this up once I've tested it out, which is the next step. Now the instructions ask to disconnect the uh, purple wire um, that's feeding the pump and, and repower 
uh, the controller and what we're supposed to see I have to walk over to the switch so I can't actually watch this but I'll keep the camera on it what we're supposed to see is the red fault light should come on indicating that the sensor is disconnected the run the green light should be blinking steadily half a second on half a second off indicates that power is on and that the microcontroller is operating and the pressure the press green uh, that light should be off the max red should be on indicates the controller is set for maximum output this is generated when a sensor failure is detected of course the pumps not gonna work because we have the purple wire disconnected so let me go flip the switch on and we'll see what happens All right, so that looks like it's correct. We can turn off the power and continue on with the next step. All right, I reconnected that uh, purple wire that was disconnected. Now we're supposed to turn the pump on. It is running. And we're supposed to purge air out of the system. Let's get all the air out. what it's doing over here. It is running. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, but we got leaks. We got leaks. All right. All right. Well, I just hadn't quite tightened that angled connector up there that goes to the pressure sensor very well. But it is now, and the pump is on and uh, we have no leaks so that's a good thing all right so uh, now we need to attach the pressure sensor all right i have the pressure sensor connected uh, the lights are doing what they're supposed to do there's one more thing we need to do since we have a tank style water heater not a tankless water heater we need to set it for tank mode and uh, let me just look up the instructions on how to do that there it is, all buttoned up. I just mounted the control module with uh, some command strip Velcro strips. Uh, fits really well right there. Dressed up the wires a bit. Put a little bit of pipe insulation around the pipes. Help quiet things down maybe a little bit more. So yeah, let's turn it on and see how it sounds. It is definitely much quieter. Right now I have it uh, kitchen faucet on full. Let me turn that down. That's the other benefit is I can go a lower flow. So let's turn the flow down. And you don't hear the pump at all. Very nice. You know, before it would do the burp, 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 burp. And now it's not doing that. So all in all, I would call this a success. Um, we'll see how it holds up over time. Um, it is a little bit expensive, I know. So uh, check the comments, um, the description, and I'll put any updates in there if, uh, if I decide this thing wasn't worth the money. So hopefully this video will help someone if uh, you decide to install this uh, in your trailer. Thanks for watching.